Back in chapter two, we first began talking about linear kinematic, right? If something is accelerating at a constant rate, then this is the first equation of linear kinematics. Then uh, the second equation is uh, third equation. Fourth equation. Okay, and then after that, we saw F equals MA, Newton's law, right? Then we saw for circular motion, A equals MV squared over R. So I'm kind of quickly going through some of the key things that we've gone through. Then work is equal to force times dr, which equals changing kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is defined as half mv squared, OK? And then what else have we seen? Then we went to momentum, right? Momentum is defined as mv. Then uh, impulse is defined as Ft. F is written as dp dt. So the force is rate of change of linear momentum is the general form of Newton's second law. And then impulse is change of linear momentum, right? Let's see, can we think of any other thing? Linear kinematics, Newton's law, circular motion, work, kinetic energy, kinetic en definition of kinetic energy. Oh, how about power? Power is work divided by time, which equals what? If I want to find instantaneous power, it's the dot product of what? Force times velocity, right? That's about that's about it, I think. That's a review of about eight chapters there. OK? Kinematics. Um, I didn't put in projectile motion, because projectile motion is just simply the, the application of this to uh, gravity. So um, pretty much that's, that's the, all the stuff we've learned. So now let's apply that, take that, and use it for rotational motion. OK? So in rotational motion, Here's what happens. So suppose we have a disk, OK? So the disk is rotating, OK? So what, what we want to know is if there's a certain point on the disk, as it rotates, what's the angle covered by that point? So let's say it starts here, and it, at a certain time, it goes over there. What's that angle theta? A lot of times it's written as delta theta, meaning change of angle. Or you could just write it as theta and understand it to mean uh, the angle that it went. So in other words, what's going to happen is theta is going to replace the x here. For linear motion, we're interested in where does the object start? Where does it end? For angular motion, we're interested in what is the initial angle, what is the final angle, OK? So basically, x is replaced by angle, theta, OK? And then uh, velocity, the v here, is replaced by what? Now you're going to see uh, like uh, analogies, you know? v is the rate of change of x, right? So there's got to be some variable that tells you how fast theta is changing. So that's going to be called omega. So a lot of Greek letters are going to come in here. So uh, x is measured in meters. Theta is measured in rads. 
V is measured in meter per second. Omega is measured in rads per second. Then A is meter per second squared. Okay. And what replaces that is alpha. So alpha tells you how fast omega is changing, if it is changing at all. You see? So it's rad, rads per second squared. So it's called angular acceleration. <clears throat> and, the, and the two variables are actually connected via this equation. From geometry, if this thing covers a certain arc length s, how is s and theta connected? From geometry, we know that s is equal to uh, r theta, right? So if s equals r theta, what's the rate of change of s? The s dt. Then that's the tangential velocity of the edge of the disk, right? So that's V tangential. That's equal to R d theta dt, which is equal to R omega. And then if I take the derivative of the tangential velocity, uh, so that gives me A tangential, which equals to dV tangential dt. Remember in chapter 4 we talked about that. The tangential acceleration is if while you're going in a circle, you're also speeding up, you see? So A tangential is going to equal R dW dt, which equals R alpha, okay? So I'm going to summarize this this way. Uh, S equals R theta, V tangential equals RW, A tangential equals R alpha. Okay, so having said that then, I'm going to uh, rewrite these equations like this. The first equation is going to be everywhere that I see V, I'm going to put omega. Everywhere where I put A, I'm going to put alpha, you see? So I'm going to have omega final is omega initial plus alpha t. So you're really not using a whole new set of equations. You're just replacing, you know. So you have here theta final is theta initial plus omega initial t plus half alpha t squared. And then over here you have Omega final squared is omega initial squared plus 2 alpha theta final minus theta initial. And then over here, theta final is theta initial plus omega initial plus omega final over 2 times t. So you have a, a set of four equations just like we did, we had that in chapter two, rotational dynamics. So remember some of the other equations that we wrote down earlier. Now here's what's gonna happen. Every time you see a force in the linear, it's gonna be replaced by what's known as torque. And later on in future, uh, lectures, I'll go into more what in depth what is torque, you know. So, F replaced by torque. Every time you see mass, it gets replaced by what? Moment of inertia. The moment of inertia tells you how hard it is to rotate something. You see? So, I gets replaced by, uh, uh, by um, M gets replaced by I. A gets, of course, replaced by alpha. Then the kinetic energy is half. Uh, uh, M gets replaced by I. What does V get replaced by? Omega, right? So this tells you rotational kinetic energy of an object. You see? 
And then uh, what other equations were there? Like if we go to the <coughs> linear momentum equation, Linear momentum is going to get replaced by angular momentum. Mass gets replaced by I, and V gets replaced by omega. And we could do that with all the other w equations that we wrote down earlier, you know. Um, so I'm not going to write, write them all down, but in the future lectures, you'll see. Wherever you have F gets replaced by torque, whatever you have mass gets replaced by I. So now let's talk about I. What is I? <coughs> 